convene. This is the Public Facilities, Arts, and Culture uh, Committee meeting for June the 7th. Uh, Chair Bradford is uh, out of town, actually out of the country, and as your Vice Chair, uh, I'll be conducting um, our discussion today. Uh, we have a number of different things uh, on the agenda. First up is Resolution uh, 2022-1564. Approves a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and the Library Corporation to provide software maintenance and support for the Carl X Integrated Library System. There is a letter uh, to approve from Ms. Allen. So moved. Any discussion on this or any update that we can get from libraries regarding the software that we may need? Um, I can tell you about sure. it. I'm Lee Boom, the Assistant Director of Collections and Technology at the library. My Angela McElrath is here with, from finance. Um, and this is a contract to extend the integrated library system, which is the catalog. So that's where you would search for your books, your audio books, or videos. It also integrates with MNPS's system, and we provide that support um, for the schools. And they have requested that we stay with the same system and not uh, go through training. It also has the proper security um, to make sure that all data is protected. Fantastic. This sounds a lot easier than the Dewey Decimal System of the I was going to say, what happened to the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System? Long and the drawers. Card catalog. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that. I read about that. <laughs> um, yeah, right. You're so young. <laughs> Can we be any other questions are on this? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, then. Um, next up. Um, RS-2022-1571 approves a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metro National Public Library to provide access to and circulation of special materials formatted for individuals who are hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, maybe take this and the next one together. They seem to be the um, same. Uh, 7 -2. For discussion purposes, yeah. Um, 1572 and... I'm happy to. Um, it's like a the grant same. and then the amendment. Yeah, exactly. Um, the uh, I'll go ahead and read the caption on uh, 1572, which approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metro National Public Library to provide access to and circulation of special materials for men and for individuals who are hearing impaired. Um, our, uh, both have been properly moved and seconded. Do we have uh, an explanation of the resolution and the amendment. Sure. Uh, yes. Angela McElrath Foster, Finance Manager of the Library. The first one, 71, is our FY23 annual grant for uh, as the usual $88,000 to provide the service. And then the, the uh, 72 is actually an amendment to our FY22 same grant because in FY22, when we had gotten approval to get the grant, the line item budget was had an employee in but um, the FY22 grant from uh, budget for Metro was kind enough to have give us the employee in the Metro budget, so we had to go back to the state and get the budget realigned. And we thought we had done that in July of 21, and the state uh, didn't send us the paperwork to amend it officially through all of the signatures until they discovered their oversight a couple of months ago. Okay. And so then we had to turn around and get you guys to show you the amendment to let you know what happened. Okay. We're still getting the whole 88000 It's just instead of having to spend it on an employee, we get to spend it on the services. The That's good that we didn't, didn't lose that. Um, are there any questions regarding either one of these resolutions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Thank you. Um, bills on second reading. We have uh, BL 2022-1250. Amendments the Metro Code to create the Nashville Entertainment Commission. We have a letter to defer to 7522 without substitute and a substitute from Mr. Swope. Uh, we're first going to move this into discussion. Do I have a move, second? Move for deferral to first meeting July. Second. Any other discussion? Anyone opposed to that? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, and then finally, we have uh, BL 2022-1255, approves an agreement for a greenway conservation easement between P. 
PRII SH Peabody Union Apartments owner LLC and the Metro Government. Uh, we have an amendment from Mr. Mendez. Can we uh, move uh, this into discussion as well as the amendment? So move. All right. Fantastic. And um, uh, Mr. Mendez, you want to explain your amendment? Sure. And I understand the um, bill needs to be deferred. Um, one committee yesterday did not take up the amendment and just deferred it. Another committee adopted the amendment and then deferred it, and I'm happy to do it either way. Um, but briefly, the amendment, um, this we've done this before. Um, it would amend the actual easement document to make clear that the Greenway easement does not prohibit e-bikes. The council might one day decide to do something to regulate e-bikes on greenways, but the actual easement documents between landowners and parks shouldn't, should be clear that that's not what um, uh, regulates e-bikes. And we've done that once before in District 19, um, and uh, I don't understand the sponsor doesn't have an objection to it. So it's up to you all whether you want to, I understand it's getting deferred one way or the other, um, it might be easier so you don't have to talk about it next time to just adopt it and then defer it. Yes, I, be I believe there, there's <laughs> value in the consistency, and I'd like to go ahead and move the amendment. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. All right. And now, having amended uh, the legislation, I move for the deferral. Is it one week? Uh, I mean, one meeting? One meeting deferral for the thing as a whole? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no one against. Uh, we have concluded our amazing business today. Oh, so and we have a public. We uh, have a guest. special mm -hmm. guest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, please introduce your guest. I like guests. Well, actually, she actually is. Yeah, she's uh, in District One. District uh, Twenty One. I do. But I you know, do. And, and go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us a minute. No, I well, I just know that she is a longtime devoted. Uh, resident of District 21. She's been very active in the community and in, in so many aspects, and we're just always very pleased to have her. She's an author. And <laughs> just, uh, own it. Own it. Uh, uh, amazing. She is my community president of my organization that I'm a part of. Now, he's going to tell me. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying gotta I, take I, her. Think, I think it's okay for her to like both of y'all. Y'all don't have to compete and see. <laughs> I, I want to get her on this, too. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, she shows up in District 19. <laughs> but it's yeah, Simone so Boy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for the warm introduction. Um, this is my first time coming to a committee um, meeting, so I'm grateful to be here. But I'm here. I wanted to ask to share some thoughts about the situation that's unfolding at with Metro Arts currently. Um, I am an artist. I worked with Metro Arts for the past four or five years. And over the past couple of years, um, I've experienced some uh, challenges in working with them. And that escalated um, recently, um, not my personal challenges, but I was um, inserted into an com employee complaint that was filed on Friday at 11 p.m., at 11 a.m. before Memorial Day weekend. Um, charges were brought against Janine Cristiano, who is the grants manager at Metro Arts, and her disciplinary hearing was on Tuesday after Memorial Day at 9.30 a.m. And so um, I believe that what I've experienced and what I've witnessed is a culture of retaliation and intimidation at Metro Arts, a culture of silencing dissent, and a culture of dual standards of, for employees of color. Um, I personally have worked for two years with Metro Arts on the Our Town project. We almost missed our deadline due to Van Miravelli's failure to file with the, ask permission from mayor's office and to file with the council. <coughs> I addressed this with Carolyn Vincent, and she stepped in to actually submit the grant. A year after the project has been awarded, we've, we've made almost no progress, and NDOT has now stepped in to be the project lead. Um, the, regarding the culture of retaliation and intimidation, Janine Cristiano has been the sole employee trying to hold Metro Arts accountable for its stated values of equity, and these charges were brought against her. She has no incentive to bring these charges up as an employee of Metro Arts. And violence, finally, silencing dissent. If you go to Metro Arts' website and you go to their current, in their page on the national government, to the best of my knowledge, I cannot find the 80 comments that were submitted in response to this 
due to these allegations of toxicity from artists and from people. And I think that I think that is a violation of Sunshine Rules. I can't find minutes. Very few in the past couple of months. Very few agendas have been published. Um, and this culture of intimidation and retaliation has been allowed to bloom under Chair Jim Schmidt um, with coordination from Ian Myers. So what I'm asking is the, this committee here, if you would please write a letter asking for the resignation of Jim Schmidt and Ian Myers. Um, well, uh, I, I, I for one uh, appreciate the opportunity for any, consi any constituent, any citizen uh, of Nashville to be able to have a place, to have a voice, and to communicate it, and I'm glad that you've had that opportunity here today. Mm -hmm. um, this committee um, is um, bound to uh, look at pending legislation, and we need to make sure that the Human Relations Department and the Metro um, uh, Commission that has been assigned, that we've given that authority to review, uh, gives ample time for the process of the review. And because that entire process is still under review, it would be inappropriate for me as vice chair to make any recommendation to make official comment on it while it's being reviewed. But I think it's extremely important for everyone to make, have their voice heard. And uh, we're aware of the opportunities to be able to be more transparent and to be better at it. Um, but uh, I know that until the complete uh, review is, is finalized, it's difficult for us as a committee to make any comment on it. And so, um, but I do appreciate the opportunity to hear from you. And as you know, I'm uh, a big fan of the work that Metro Arts does through its work, both with individuals through the Thrive Grants and through different uh, individual grants, as well as the work that it does for an art, arts nonprofits. And so um, I will make sure that this video gets to the chair, Bradford, so that he can also uh, make any decisions in regard to the future. But as a vice chair, I think it would be appropriate to just uh, kind of wait for the final report, OK? Thank you very much. Um, any other business? on this committee? Well, I just wanted to make sure that, did she have any other comments or uh, any response to that? Just want to make sure that yeah, you, sure. Yeah. everything is... <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I would just note that Ian Myers brought the charges against Jane Cristiano, and she's, he's also serving on the review panel for her hearing, which I think is a conflict of interest. And I would just say there's already been a fact-finding report. And so you, have, you all have the power to send a signal for all of Nashville that you want equity. In the, in the heat of 2020, a lot of things were said and done, but now it's time to see action. And well, and I, yeah, I, I appreciate it, I appreciate it um, uh, but I, I don't think that this committee is in a position to take any action at all until the complete evaluation is done. There are other things still pending. We may so not take action, but I still want to make sure that she is heard to absolutely. completion. So I, if there's more that you want to say, I would ask that you all make sure that people, dozens of people have written comments, and they're not even viewable on the Metro Arts website. Okay, that's, that's There's no minutes advice. available for those meetings, okay. and that is a pattern of silence and dissent. And I feel like in this moment, I'm being silent, which is unfair. Oh, I apologize if I've caused that work. That, that's that's okay. Um, I'm used to yeah, a yeah. black woman, so. Um, oh, I, that's um, not fair. So I would just say that I would ask you all, to, I'm inviting well, you all to please, you know. That may not have been the intent, uh, council lady, but sometimes it feels the same. And I just think that it would be a matter of courtesy just to make sure that our constituent is Absolutely. completely heard. Thanks, Jeff, if I may. Um, just uh, as far as kind of next steps, and so um, to Vice Chair's point, um, you know, when there is something in progress, and I appreciate you sharing that there has been some results thus far, and, you know, in employment matters, what is public, what is not public, what we can kind of comment on and respond to, often what we're looking for is like, okay, well, this is a definitive moment or a transition moment, and then so the council might respond to the findings of this report. Or, um, But I think on the, kind of the operational and procedural side, as we do all in all our committees when there is a aligned board or commission, 
around kind of best practice, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, because it's an employment matter, I'm not kind of sure what the rules are, but I think it is um, within the realm of, of what we could do at this time to ask that the minutes, um, you know, the agendas, um, you know, sure. comments that were made on the public record for a matter that is a pretty broad community interest. I mean, we get a fair amount of emails yes. about this, and I have sort of, you know, flagged and pulled into a folder because I feel like, okay, this is pending, to yeah. Vice Chair's point, like there's something yeah. kind of going on, and so I'm kind of trying, waiting for what the next threshold moment is to like right. decide how do we respond to this. Yeah. But in the interim and in the meantime, in the interest of transparency, I would like to ask Vice Chair yeah. if you and Chair Bradford can just make sure that um, what is within our purview as far as kind of best practice and transparency Absolutely. that's appropriate in the context of an HR matter. So sometimes, you know, when there's employment issues, that's it's not out in the public, um, and that's not to, uh, anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure what the rules are around that. Yeah, but if, yeah. if at a minimum, in response to your concern, if, if we could ask for that, Absolutely. I think that would be a good, or I would like to suggest that's a good um, middle step. I think that I think that's very valid. You, does that sound like at least a, a little step forward? Yes. I All think right. Inserting transparency would be helpful. And, and I, I would like to say, Ms. Boyd, is that it is not our role to arbitrate um, issues among um, personnel issues, but we do feel that it is our responsibility to hear the voices of our constituency. And if we decide whether it's collectively as a, a committee or individually that we might write a letter uh, asking uh, or, or making some concerns known to us, we do have that right to do so. Sure. Uh, so just want you to, to know that and not all is lost. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'm being summoned for a quorum. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you. And, thank you for coming. Um, thank you. Okay. All right. With that, we're in closing the meeting. Thank, thank you very you. much. Can I, can I make one suggestion? It doesn't, it's okay.